Well, good morning and happy Tuesday. Um, it's been said that as long as um, there are resumes, there will be creative writing, at least in America. And um, I can offer some testimony to that. I have uh, a handful of fraternity brothers who were all members of the D Club. So we went to DePaul University. Uh, the D Club, they were hoping, made it sound like they were, um, you know, varsity athletes, uh, lettermen. But uh, what it really meant is that they got a D in a class. And, uh, but they were hoping that when on their law school applications, they put down that they were the vice president of the D Club, that that, that, that would be understood to be something different from what it was. So today, as we continue our study of Hebrews, we are looking at the exact opposite kind of a resume. Now, it is grand beyond calibration, but it is, uh, even at that, it's understated. So it comes in Hebrews chapter 1, and, um, and it's, a, it's, it's a description of Jesus. It's not a description of him physically. We do get that. Uh, we get enough of a description of Jesus in, in for instance, in John, 1 John, to, to confirm that he's a real person, because the Gnostics were, were suggesting that Jesus might be fully God, but that he was not fully human. Uh, that's the heresy called Gnosticism. <clears throat> it was the first problem. Today, everybody's willing to agree that Jesus was a man. They just don't think he was God. But back then, many were willing to say that he was God, but because of Greek influence, they were not willing to say that he was a man. Uh, we also get a physical... Uh, a, a, enough of a physical description in Isaiah 53 to know that he was not attractive. Uh, he had no stately form or majesty that we would be drawn to him. But um, so it's not a physical description we're getting. We're getting uh, more of, a, of an account of the person and the work of Jesus. So let me read the first few verses here. Hebrews 1. Long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our ancestors by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed one, the heir of all things, through whom he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature. He upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited <clears throat> is more excellent than theirs. So what we have are seven <clears throat> statements, seven excellencies, seven attributes, seven glories. The commentators sort of use different terms. We, we've got a little bit of a poverty of, of our language to be able to describe these statements about Christ. And just today, a few things to point out here. First of all, it's a little odd at first glance that he would start with the word air as opposed to talking about how he created everything. <clears throat> you'd think you'd begin at the beginning, but remember, this letter is being written to people who are in some sort of crisis that's going to come up later on. And we're not exactly certain what the crisis is, but there's a crisis. And so they're under stress, they're under attack, they're under assault. And when you're under assault, you don't necessarily care how things began. You're more interested in how they end. And Jesus is going to inherit everything. Now, a second thing, just to note, um, the word heir that is used here, uh, God makes him the heir of all things, God the Father. Um, it, it's a little bit less of inheritance, having just said it's, he's going to inherit everything. He does get appointed and exalted, and we see that in Revelation at the end. But uh, it speaks to his status and his dignity. And yet, he's being appointed because of his humility. Right? Even though Jesus is fully God, uh, I mean, he is, he is infinite and eternal. He is wise and powerful. He is loving and good. Um, he's just. Even though Jesus is, is fully God, he, uh, he accepts this assignment in which he lowers himself. So two things to leave you with today on this Tuesday. One, are you willing to lower yourself? Like we live in a world where everyone is demanding their rights and, and not the least bit interested in being slighted. And yet Jesus gives up his rights. He humbles himself and therefore God exalts him. So are you willing to be humbled? Wrongly, are you willing to be put down? Are you willing to absorb that? Secondly, please understand that um, the people here, they're, they're betting on Jesus. And, and so that's 
sort of the backdrop here. And so coming right out of the gate, talking about how awesome Jesus is. And you need to know how awesome Jesus is because you need to be all in with Jesus. I mean, they're betting everything. And there's a sense in which you are betting everything on Jesus or you're betting everything against Jesus because he makes that kind of a personal demand. So today, as we continue uh, through the week, think about the call to be humble and think about whether or not you're fully vested in Jesus. Have a good day.